Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. And I am your host, Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much for stopping by to the educational channel about the world of wine, the wonderful world of wine. In this series, we, we call this explaining wine terminology. We take typical wine terminologies and we give you the information you need to feel confident to understand it. Very useful for those of you studying your wine examinations, but also useful for the wider populace as well in terms of understanding tannin. If you do have any comments or questions or concerns, you can get in touch with us. So you can comment on the video below. There's a comment section here on YouTube, or you can get in touch via the social media at the bottom of every slide or direct at the Wine with Jimmy website. That's info at winewithjimmy.com. All right, let's go into the world of tannins, which some of you will know something about and certainly have experienced it, no doubt. But what exactly are they? Where do they come from? Whereabouts in the grape do they come from? What sensory impacts do they have? That's what we will be looking at in this section. So let's rock and roll. Okie doke. So um, if you do drink wine, and I really hope you do if you're watching this video, um, at one point or another, you've probably heard someone refer to a wine's tannins, or you probably have done so yourself. Uh, maybe you've read about it in some wine literature or seen it on the telly. But you may not know exactly, you know, what they are or why they matter. While knowing what this term means is not necessary for enjoying a glass of wine, maybe it's just to give you that edge in a group, I don't know, um, it can help you better understand the wine you're drinking and actually even give you some clues to about what kind of wine style you like and whether you like this in greater or smaller amounts in the glass that you are enjoying or potentially not. So let's look at, first of all, the etymology, so the naming of tannin and a little bit of history behind it, just a very quick slide just here. Uh, so tannin is a blanket terminology for a group of rather differing polymers that historically were used to convert animal skins into leather in the process of tanning. And that's what we'll see just here. Well, this is a slight step of the process of tannin, but of course that's where the name actually derives from. The term tannin comes from an ancient Latin word for tanner, who of course enacts the art of tanning, and that refers to the use of tree bark to tan hides. So there's your little bit of history and your etymology, and maybe some of you didn't uh, actually know that. Um, useful little facts for you. So what are tannins? So plants form tannins as defense molecules. That's what you'll see here in nature. And that's both for defending against microbial attack and because plants are also extremely vulnerable to being eaten. And that's because they can't just get up and walk away like maybe we can or hide or run or whatever. Uh, tannins, are, you know, plants are actually found anchored into the ground and therefore uh, produce many complex chemicals and compounds to protect them against marauding animals and also bugs. Uh, so they act therefore producing this tannin as an antifeedant to stop, of course, animals feeding on the plants. And, and really, um, there are very few plants that humans can consume in their entirety. There are parts of a plant that humans very much like, and the plant is fine with that, but the structural part of the plant is often not desirable to us, and that's because the plant doesn't want it to be desirable to us. So um, tannins in wine are found in a variety of states. They are intrinsically sticky molecules and join up with other components, 
such as anthocyanin. So anthocyanins are the color uh, that we find in wine, for example, the pigmentation. And they form pigmented polymers that can then potentially combine with other chemicals. Uh, the way you can actually see this, if you uh, maybe you're at a tasting and you're spitting out the wine, maybe sacrilegious to some of you, but it does happen in professional trade tastings. But you could do this at home if you really want to uh, into a, a cup or something like that, but spit the wine out. So taste a red wine, move it around the mouth like you would do like a professional taster and spit it out. So if you're in, uh, you have a spittoon or if you see it in a cup, you'll actually see that it's not the nicest of things to do. It doesn't look very pleasant at all. Uh, but you'll see large strings of congealing saliva with tannin and pigment. You'll start to see them start sort of um, agglomerating all the tannin and all the pigment within the saliva. And that's what happens when we actually taste. Uh, you'll find it all starts to congeal, precipitate out. And that's actually what we'll talk a little bit uh, a little bit later on about how it affects your palate actually. So the scientific word for these compounds, including tannin, are polyphenols. That's what we'll see at the bottom of the slide just there. And polyphenols release from the skins, the seeds and the stems when they soak in the grape juice and the wine after the grapes have been pressed. And they give certain wines, such as things like Cabernet Sauvignon, their characteristic dryness. Uh, and or astringency. And the pictures here, you've got some oak chips, um, oak powder, uh, grape seeds and grape skins, which are all areas where we find tannin components. OK, on tree bark, for instance, a lot of tannin found in tree bark to protect it against animals, uh, birds and such. OK, so where do they come from? Just sort of briefly mentioned here, but tannins are naturally occurring compounds that exist in the grape skins uh, and the stems and the seeds. So the stems or the stalks, the skins and the seeds or the pips are where we find them. And there are different levels of tannins actually within these, uh, but we widely talk about the skin tannin being the major component in terms of wine. There will be some from potentially the seeds, depending how much contact they have. And there may also be some from the stems, depending what form of production method in winemaking will possibly extract that if it is necessary, if it is wanted or desired. So tannin is actually quite uh, enjoyed by some winemakers because it um, is a natural antioxidant. Uh, so it therefore acts to protect the wine against oxygen. Uh, so this is really the key reason why red wines, uh, including the likes of things like Cabernet Sauvignon, but you can have some wonderful Zinfandel, some Merlot, even Pinot Noir, many, a big list of red wines can be very age worthy, some more than others, Cabernet much more for say than Pinot Noir. And that's because of their level of tannin, which enables them to be protected for longer amounts of time against oxygen in the air. OK, so as an antioxidant. OK, so what so we just learned what they are, where they come from. Um, the uses. What about sensory implications? So how do they affect you and me? What happens with tannin in the palate? Well, we sense tannins in wine largely as an astringent sensation. But there is also a contribution of taste in some cases. Sometimes we I'm going to talk about astringency just in a moment, but in terms of taste, sometimes you could taste something maybe like a bitter cranberry red currant note in a wine, maybe something like a Nebbiolo from Piemonte in Italy, and it gives you that sensation. So you have a sensation of taste with the kind of fruitiness that you will, uh, will find. So what about astringency then? OK, so it's found as astringency. Now, astringency is not principally a taste. It's not one of the primary taste factors such as sweet, sour, bitter, salt or umami. Uh, it is more about the almost like the sense of touch 
in the mouth. Though this is something which is scientifically very, um, very difficult to really put your finger upon. Uh, but tannins remove, um, one thing we do know is that tannins remove a protein called mucin. So this is what you actually see up here on the slide. Uh, and this mucin normally forms a lubricated and slippery protective layer in the mouth that is produced with your saliva. Um, what happens is that tannin comes along in a red wine and removes that mucin, and that's what gives you the impactful sense of dryness when you have a very high tannic red. Now, actually, normally, most tasters, um, certainly when you're enjoying a red wine, most will be able to adapt quite easily to that tannin, and also in moderation, wine won't have too much greater effect. But um, more prolonged tasting, and that causes issues. And I'm going to talk about that on the next slide or so, maybe in a couple of slides' time. Um, so tannins can also seem bitter. So we've talked about astringency. They can also seem bitter as well in relation, uh, often in conjunction with astringency. They are also a structural component uh, in wine, so they add a body. So often we'll find very tannic wines, like a, a ripe and rounded mouthfeel of an Australian Shiraz has a very prevalent tannin to them. It must also be noted, though, finally here, about the very subjective nature of wine, the very much inter and intra differences in saliva production person to person and how they're able to adapt to tannin. So some will not have a huge amount of mucin, which will be able to um, sort of buffer the amount of tannin. So therefore they're gonna be quite sensitive to it, whereas others will be able to build up saliva quite easily. Uh, and that means you'll be able to deal with uh, maybe um, uh, a tannin on a greater scale, a more consumed scale, I suppose. Um, what about type and location in the mouth? So unripe tannins tend to be more aggressively astringent. So unripe tannin is what is made in wines from cooler years, um, poor weather conditions or picked early grapes, maybe forced because of weather conditions. So you'll find unripe tannins. They'll give you that aggressively astringent note. And a way to really decipher this, uh, if you're not sure on how to pick that up, is um, if you do taste a wine that you think might be astringent, think about the body of that wine. Does it seem quite thin and quite hollow? You know, is there not much body behind it? And then you get this quite aggressively astringent tannin on top of it, this kind of um, quite, um, uh, quite intense dryness and quite green often as well. So that's the unripe side of it. Now, ripe tannins, and this is what it says on the right hand side here, contribute more to textural richness. There's more roundness, more mouthfeel that comes through that. Um, you may find lower levels of astringency in this style, so not a, a, an astringently tannic style, but with a more fuller and mouth-filling sensation, you get more higher tannins due to that. And that's kind of the typical style of like an Aussie Shiraz or quite a good quality um, um, Argentine Malbec. You'll find nice ripe and round tannin, but not necessarily the astringent side of it. Um, what about what competes in the mouth for your tannin? So tannins can seem seamless. I'm not going to use the word, I mean, it's been used up there, reduced, because they're not actually reduced, but they, they compete. They're being competed against. So they seem less when there are sugars or other wine components. Uh, so, for example you can have less astringency, is what it says on the left-hand side, with more alcohol, for example. Uh, so you don't find it being as, as astringently, uh, astringently green and tannic, uh, but uh, you have yeah, that more ripeness and more richness with alcohol. Uh, but bitterness, though, can be increased with more alcohol. So less astringency, but bitterness can be increased. Um, now, tannins are also more astringent when there is a, um, a lower pH. I do apologize about this, but that is not correct just here. So I'm going to do this and cross that out right there. There you are. 
So that's a sneaky little gremlin mistake there. So let's put lower here, please. Uh, so candida accretes with a lower pH. So pH is down towards three, which generally means much higher acidities. Uh, so Cabernet Sauvignon, for example, is a great example. And that's really due to more saliva being formed and precipitating out the tannin and therefore making it seem much more drying and much more, um, you know, you're basically creating a drier sensation because the saliva is be being precipitated out with the, with the tannin. Okay, so that is tannins increasing. Uh, all you got to think in terms of a low acidity, uh, sorry, a high acidity wine with a low pH, are things like Cabernet Sauvignon dominant wines, um, which have very high acidities and actually very high tannins potentially as well, uh, that can, can often seem a little bit astringent. Okay, uh, so that's competing factors. Next up is just something I want to mention here as well is the difficulties therefore of mass tasting because we have now just learned that tannin uh, can cause a dryness in the mouth. And this is really due to the removal of mucin, which uh, is that kind of um, that uh, protective layer that was found in the mouth due to saliva. Uh, so with red wines, the tannins will be interacting with these saliva proteins, uh, precipitating them and causing a sensation of astringency and mouth drying. The initial layer of mucins lubricating, lubricating the mouth will be stripped out and repeated exposure then to red wines will strip out more and more. Your saliva won't be able to keep up reproducing the mucin if you are continually tasting, like in big professional trade tastings. Um, now this won't happen to a normal consumer who's just enjoying a bottle of wine at home or in a restaurant, but it will potentially with mass tasting like you'll see in the picture just here. Uh, so astringency will be increased, as I mentioned, as the saliva can't keep up and eventually it becomes quite uncomfortable. We call this palate fatigue. So, you know, it, it's really important to strategically approach mass tasting. You need to, uh, you know, maybe go around tasting a select few of reds, maybe sort of five, 10 reds, and then move on to whites, maintaining always hydration as you go through the tasting as well. So hydrate frequently with water, uh, and that's because dehydration obviously will reduce saliva flow. So hydration is very important. So if you are doing a huge volume of reds, please make sure that you are hydrating really in between each wine if you can, or at least every few wines or so. Okay, and that's what we call palate fatigue. Okay, so I did mention a little bit earlier about the differences uh, between person to person regarding tannins and how sensitive you may be. There are everyday tests and items that you could really look at to test your sensitivity to tannin. Uh, and um, if you want to try, you can brew a cup of extra strong black tea uh, and tannins naturally occur in tea leaves. So they're found in black tea uh, and their characteristics emerge when the tea is brewed a few minutes longer than recommended. So uh, if you've got a tea bag, you can do this with a tea bag at home if you want, but make sure that the tea bag has had plenty of contact with the hot water so it's been steeped in there for a long time you'll actually start to see a formation of tannin on the top of the tea often there's a little coating on top of that as well uh, so after after doing that you can have a sip of the tea and you'll immediately notice the bitterness uh, in the middle of your tongue and the dryness at the front of your mouth so you kind of get a bitterness uh, really at the um uh, at the at the middle of your tongue um, and then the dryness towards the front. I actually find the bitterness goes all the way to the back of my palate as well. It's not always exactly the science of saying it's exactly here for you, it's exactly here for me. Um, it's actually different person to person. So do um, make sure that you um, understand that. So just have a go. Maybe um, have, have a little bit more of an extended test by making a tea with milk 
Um, then make a tea without milk, but with only a short amount of contact with the tea leaves. And then make one with an extended amount of contact with tea leaves. You've got three different modes there. Um, the first one will have an absolutely minor amount of tannic effect with the milk because it has to compete with the lactone that you find within the milk. So it therefore will not have much of a sensory impact. Then you should find a minor impact with the, um, the black tea with a short maceration with its tea leaves. And then you should find a huge impact, of course, with a long maceration with its tea leaves. If you're not into tea, you could try it with other products as well. Um, you can try it with black grapes and red grapes and green grapes. So if you if you buy green, red and black grapes and then taste, uh, you peel the skins off them, taste each of those skins and it will give you an idea of a little tannin, more tannin and greater tannin in the mouth. And you could try it with other things, coffee, um, pints of beers and things like that. You could do a lager, a bitter, and you could do like a, a porter or a stout or something along those lines. There's many a little tests that can be done depending on who you are and what you like. Um, I'm not going to mention tannin here in relation to food and how it interacts with food. That's going to be done on another video in the future. But thank you so much for your time and attention on learning things around tannin. If you do have any comments, questions or concerns, once again, you can get in touch. You can comment on this video below. Uh, please make sure that you click like and you click subscribe to make sure you get two updates a week from the Wine with Jimmy uh, channel here on YouTube. Um, also, uh, if you want to study wine in greater detail, uh, we do have a, a platform called the e-learning wine, which is a portal which is exceptionally useful for those of you studying for your uh, court of master sommeliers, your WSETs and so on. They are geared mainly towards WSET, but include a great wealth of videos, exclusive video content, flashcards, short written answer questions, more essay questions, revision sessions, map sessions. You name it, we have it on there to help you with your wine studies. So have a click over to winewithjimmy.com to have a look at the e-learning portal. But thank you so much for your time. I hope to see you soon. If you do find yourself in old blighty, the shores of England, come and see us. You know, I've got schools and a wine bar. So come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy. Bye.